underwater diving trip turns tragic when a giant eel named Emma mistakes diver Matt Butcher's thumb for food. Across America, that boy in Florida and the woman in Hawaii attacked within a day of each other as the number of shark incidents increases at an alarming rate. I've never felt force like that from any animal or anything in my life, so I was and I was in shock. This video shows him and other surfers in the water off Jacksonville Beach over the weekend, struggling with what he now thinks was a black tip shark. Each year, millions of people are feeding animals to achieve a once in a lifetime experience of getting up close and personal to dangerous animals. But does this practice have adverse effects? Been down in your luck, lost to drive in the ride. You were settling up, and I remember when mom used to pet me at lunch. The preparation made me ass. Am I having enough? Cause when you ask, now you have not scooters on a back block. Fell and scraped my knee. I left my ego on the black top. And honestly, it never damaged my practice. My faith had been a few to truly keep me alive. Through the dark days, hard times, dealing with some issues I was scared to admit. I pretend they wasn't there and said they felt to exist until it all hit the fan. Now, I must say that most of what I'm going to speak about is in regard to wild animals and animals that are taken into rehabilitation centers and inevitably released into the wild. I am not going to be focusing on animals that are born in captivity as they cannot be released into the wild because they cannot survive there. Human food isn't healthy for animals. Wild animals have certain diets that are particular to the type of organism they are, carnivore, herbivore, or omnivore. In comparing humans and carnivores, as these are the type of organisms that cause the most issues in association with the practice of feeding, humans are fairly good omnivores, and some of the food we feed animals may not be easily digestible by them. Our GI tract, which is the gastrointestinal tract, including the stomach and intestines, is much longer than different predators like cats and dogs. This length directly correlates to the type of food that the organism eats. A carnivore's GI tract is very simple. It basically entails a long pipe with a single bulge near the beginning. Because meat and fat is easily digested, a carnivore's GI tract must be simple for maximum digestion. A human's GI tract is similar to that of the carnivore. However, humans have an enzyme in our saliva called amylase which is an enzyme used to digest starch. Because plant material is very tough, it is difficult for humans to digest. Herbivores use multiple stomachs and a process called cutting to digest plant material. Cutting is when a herbivore regurgitates the plant material in their stomach to chew it more and break it down. Amylase is a very important enzyme. However, it is not the only adaptation that humans have to digest starch. The human stomach is highly acidic, coming to a pH of between 1.5 and 3.5. This pH is crucial for breaking down different molecules because enzymes work best in an acidic environment. Humans can digest starch, bread, potatoes, rice, vegetables, and carnivores cannot. Now this is just comparing an omnivore's ability to consume starch and a carnivore's inability to do so. Now, this is not the only reason that it is ill-advised to feed wild animals, as a much larger and more dangerous reason is the act of decreasing an animal's natural skepticism towards humans. Humans feeding animals will, over time, reduce an animal's skepticism of humans. They become accustomed to humans and, in some cases, seek out humans to feed them. Animals will associate humans with an easier meal than hunting one themselves. They will tend to congregate in areas where people feed them regularly, such as tourist locations. Most times, the animals that are seeking out these areas are solitary animals like sharks. When many solitary animals are clumped into one area, they tend to act more aggressive and more territorialistic. This puts both the humans that are feeding the organism and the organisms in the area at risk of injury. When carnivores become territorial to either the location or the food source, they will try to drive out any other carnivores in the vicinity. This could cause injury as the smaller or less aggressive organism is driven out, but it also could cause harm and injury to any humans caught in the middle. 
Some organisms will also go into a frenzy when feeding where they crazily consume a food source. During this, they will bite at the food source blindly, meaning an organism in the way of the bite, including humans, will most likely get bitten. As I said earlier, some animals that are fed by humans will tend to seek out humans to secure a meal, even if the human isn't prepared to feed this animal. There are many instances of animals seeking humans to feed them. However, most humans the animals come across may not be prepared to feed said animal. There have been multiple documented attacks that have been attributed to animals that have associated humans with food. These following stories are true accounts and examples of previously mentioned phenomenons. A diver was feeding a moray eel named Emma in Asia. He was playing with Emma until he decided to begin feeding her bits of hot dog. As she smelt the food, she could trace back to where it was coming from. He struggled getting the hot dogs out of the bags they were stored in as Emma tried to work her way in to get the food. She ended up latching onto the diver's thumb, and after a short struggle, she actually tore his thumb off of his hand. In 2010, there was a string of shark attacks in which an oceanic white tip terrorized the Red Sea. Quick plug, I did a video on oceanic white tips on my Instagram, so go check that out. Most of these attacks occurred in Sharm el Sheikh, an Egyptian city. Seven to nine attacks occurred in a span of 10 days, and some of which were actually taped. Most of the attacks occurred on the person's glutes, hands, and thighs. After looking at the injuries and the species involved, experts were confused because each time the shark attacked the same place on the body. After reviewing some of the videos of the shark attacks and some of the local footage of illegal baited dives, which are dives where the divers feed the local sharks, experts noticed a common occurrence in both locations, an oceanic white tip with a crescent shape cut out of the front of its dorsal fin. This was the shark that was responsible for most of the attacks, but some still seemed confused onto why this shark was attacking people. It turns out that this shark had accustomed people to food and every human that this individual came across, it was expected to be fed. When it was not fed, it began biting at the places that people had fed it from and where they stored the food. So it bit at the hands because that's how the divers fed it. And it bit at the glutes and thighs because that's where the people who were feeding the sharks stored the food in bags and fanny packs. These are examples of somebody who is directly feeding an organism getting attacked and people who were unlucky enough to encounter an organism that not only wasn't skeptical of humans, but was brave enough to approach them for food. These were only two examples of an occurrence that happens very often around the world. Feeding that organism may seem playful and fun at the time, however, it could affect you directly or affect somebody's life down the line. 